Here's how I set up my recordings of DCS World using the VR headset. I'm using OBS. This has changed a bit with the latest update to DCS, which has brought open XR rendering. Um, so that's taken a step out for me. I use Windows Mixed Reality headset and obviously not having to use Steam VR is pretty nice. So we'll go through the OBS setup first. Uh, we'll just switch to that. So in OBS, you've got your settings button. We'll just hit that. I'll go through and show you guys. I'm using the hardware encoder. Um, I find that works better. I no luck with the software encoder at all. Currently using preset five, just in the simple output mode, it seems to work just fine. So once you've got that set, we actually need to capture the DCS output. I'm capturing the 2D render that it puts on your monitor when you're in VR. The reason for that is I haven't found something that'll work to capture the OpenXR output. There's a way to capture Steam VR output, but like I said, I'm no longer using Steam VR just to get rid of that extra overhead. So again, capture specific window, DCS, XE. Then if we go and look at the filters I have on that. So I'm using four filters to turn the output from DCS into something that I can record. The first is the Live Vision Kit Video Stabilizer. This is to reduce the jerkiness of the recording. I've maxed out the smoothing radius, so that's introducing a 350 millisecond delay for the video stabilizer to do its work. I've maxed out the crop because otherwise you just end up with too much view around the side. Uh, motion model homography that activates all of the abilities of the motion model and suppression mode strict. You could go motion model dynamic. That's fine as well. It'll work itself out. Then I'm sharpening the output a bit. Just makes it look a bit nicer. I'm then scaling it down to 1920 by 1920 because I want my output to be 1920 by 1080. It's producing a square image at whatever the resolution that OpenXR is using. I'm not actually sure. So I'm re-rendering that back down to 1920 by 1920. Then I'm cropping the top and bottom of that frame down to the 1920 by 1080. All pretty simple stuff. Since the stabilizer is introducing a 350 millisecond offset, we need to go to our audio mixer, hit the little gear buttons, bring up the advanced audio properties, and add a sync offset to any of the audio sources that we want to record, like the desktop audio and your microphone. I'm taking advantage of the OpenXR functionality, which has been incorporated in the latest DCS World Open Beta. This is just reducing one layer of interface because with Windows Mixed Reality, you have to run the Windows Mixed Reality program. Then for a Steam VR game, you need the Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR layer, and then you've got Steam VR running on top of that. So that's a few different layers going with OpenXR that hooks straight into the Windows Mixed Reality. So it's reducing the overheads a tiny bit. To get that going, I right click on the DCS World Steam Edition Open Beta link in my Steam window and select Properties. That brings up the Properties window for DCS World Steam Edition. In the advanced users may choose to enter modifications to their launch options. We just go dash dash force enable VR and dash dash force underscore open XR. That's all I have to do. Then I just start Windows Mixed Reality before starting DCS World from Steam. If you're using an Oculus headset, it'll be different. I'll put a pinned comment with a link to the ED forum where they discuss how to do this for other headsets. So here are my video settings in the systems tab in the options menu in DCS. I like to have textures on high, just make the aircraft look extra nice. Terrain textures I find I have to run on low, otherwise I'm getting really low frame rates. Everything else is set pretty low, except for res or cockpit displays, which affects your mirrors and your targeting pod display and things like that. I've set that to 1024 every frame. MSAA I've set to 2 by. It's a concession to the video making. I can live without it when I'm flying in VR, but it really makes a difference to the videos. On the right, we've got the clutter and grass, forest visibility, forest details and scenery details. I've set them how you can see. It seems to work for me. You might want to pull some of these things down. It might make a difference. I also like having a small amount of chimney smoke density set in. Just helps me with working out where the wind's coming from.
Anisotropic filtering, max it out to 16 times. It doesn't make that much of a difference to your frame rates. Terrain object shadows currently bugged. I'd normally be running them on flat. I like cockpit global illumination. It's a very modest effect. You might not be able to see it, but I don't think it makes a big difference to the frame rate either. And of course, I like rain droplets. Everything else pretty much left off. If we go to the VR tab next, slightly out of order here, normally you'd have enable virtual reality headset checked and indeed the force enable VR option in the shortcut that I showed you before will force that enable virtual reality. I leave pixel density set to 1.0, an easy way to gain a tiny bit of performance for sacrificing some visual fidelity is to drop that down. 0.9 or 0.8 is probably still usable. If you've got a beefy machine, you can probably bump that up to 1.2. Force IPD distance is actually the world scale. Uh, your mileage will certainly vary. It depends upon how your head fits into your headset device. MSA a mask size. People say this is bugged now. I set that up ages ago. That works with, if we go back to system, that works with the MSAA to only perform the MSAA on a certain part of the screen. At least that's how it used to work. People are saying it's bugged. I don't know how it works now. And the only other thing that's going to really matter, or you really want to uncheck this use DCS system resolution, because otherwise it's not going to render the mirror window in this same resolution as it's rendering for your headset. So you want to make sure that's unchecked. And then the mirror eye source, it's up to you. But if you're flying a modern jet like the F-16 or the F-18, you're probably going to want to select whichever eye you've got the Hemix or HMD showing in, just so people will see the Hemix display. And that goes for the Apache as well. Now, moving back to special, if you've got it, TAC view, flight data recording, uncheck enabled. I found I can have TAC view or I can have OBS recording. I can't have both. It's just too much load on the system. So I hope that helps. If you've got any advice for me or if you've got any questions about how I'm doing it, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm always interested to learn how to do things better. Most of all, have fun and I look forward to seeing your clips.